topics. A-mi-to-fo. 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 Good evening, everyone. Thank you for our thank you for you know being here for our first youth group session on the treaties on response and retribution. So uh, I'll give a brief, um, say forty five minutes to fifty minutes introductions. But you guys can chip in if you have a point to discuss, because this is after all a discussion. Um, I will try to op create more openings for you guys to come in. Uh, so first, I would like to introduce what, why we're doing this. How far have we gone since it, our inception, uh, this youth group's inception in uh, April or May? I forgot. Twenty nineteen. That was pre-COVID. That was a different world back then, isn't it? Uh, and we have started with um, the Leo Fan and on the recommendation of Auntie Cynthia. Now we move on to two or three times. Uh, on Leo Fan, and then we go for Yu Jin Yigong, Mr. Yu who met the stove god for two times. Um, and on that foundation, our understanding, we now move on to Tai Shang, Gan Ying Pian. In English, Tai Shang is an exalted one. Gan Ying Pian is Gan, and Ying is response and retribution. So this is a treatise, Pian is treatise. This is a treatise about response and retribution by the Exalted One. The Exalted One was actually part of the um, revered figure in the Taoist teachings, uh, Lao Tzu. Uh, and he's the one who wrote this. For us, it is actually about cause and effect. It's actually about you read what you saw. So we're actually still talking about cause and effect. So it, it, whatever you learn from Liao Fan, whatever you learn from Di Zi Gui, it's applied here. But why we are going this, why, why does Master Qing Kong begin with this? Because um, <clears throat> this is a book that tells us uh, what is right, what is wrong in a, in a straightforward manner. There won't be too much explanation compared to what we have in Liao Fan or what we have in Wei um, Jing Yigong, uh, Mr. Yu Hu met the stove god. This one is just telling you a, ba a very, like, it's like law in a sense. It's telling you the spirit of the law and telling the letter of the law telling you what is the law of karma and telling you what you do that will bring you fortune. On the contrary, what you did uh, or the bad that will bring you the bad effects. So here, Master Ching Kong already explained to us um, in this kind of society we're living in, we have uh, quite, how to say, distant ourselves from cause and effect. Uh, the teachings. So, hence, why since the early, you know, nationalist era, 1910, in the in the Chinese society, Master Ying Guang has um, started promoting this Taoist book instead of his our own Buddhist sutras, because there's no foundation for us to learn the um, high level science, high level teachings in the Buddhist book. So, hence, that he promote more on Liao Fan, more on this. You know, uh, these karmic books that teach you about the basic understanding of right and wrong. What is right, what is wrong. And what's the consequences of doing wrong. And what is the reward of holding to, your, uh, to the right path. So this is basically with the whole book. And I'm going to give you a very brief review uh, before I go into the actual text. So this is a prelude. Uh, Master Ying Guang is the one who started to promote this in the modern era that we have. Uh, and move on to Master Ching Kong's teacher, Mr. Li, uh, Bing Nan, and pass down to him. So this is kind of like, like, you know, the foundational course uh, pre, pre you to the University of Pure Land, in a sense. Um, and what you have learned so far in Liao Fan 
remember Liao Fan and Mr. Yu is in Ming Dynasty. And the book they have on merits and faults is based on this treatise. So this is actually their foundation of their practice. They use this one as a mirror. Uh, and a lot of people in the Song Dynasty in the ancient times, they use this as like a, like a, like a checklist when they're doing it. Uh, they uh, they use it as like a checklist that have I done this right? Have like if I want if I want to make sure that I'm not departing from my original intention, which is to serve the people, that I, I will use the book and check have I done any of this? Like you know, right? Um, in any company, in in university, in hospital, anything, you guys have like a I don't know SOP standard operating procedure or anything similar. You have to follow it, making sure that you don't depart from that. So this is like that, but you have to apply on yourself. Um, so why is it so important? A Taoist book, why does a great Buddhist monk who is respected by all schools and even other, other, other religions promote a Taoist book instead of a Buddhist sutra first? Because this book emphasizes a lot about karmic. And there are other Buddhist sutras that talks about karmic teachings, but this one is common among the Chinese especially of that time, uh, since a thousand years ago. Everyone has that mi mindset of, you know, if you do bad, God will punish you. If you do good, you'll be rewarded. And if you want safety and, uh, you know, uh, improvements in your life, you should follow the law, uh, follow, the, follow the good deeds and avoid the bad deeds so that you don't get punished. So using that basic, <clears throat> like existing facilities, Hence, we have these uh, teachings. <clears throat> so, index-wise, we have uh, five sections. And this book uh, will carve into five sections. First section is the principle, karma, cause and effect. And the first sentence already introduced what is Tai Shang Gai Pian about. What is, uh, we, for the ease of calling it, we call it Tai Shang. What is Tai Shang about? Uh, what is Tai Shang about? And... Once they understand the um, concept, they go towards what is good. So every one of these four by four, they are one, like one category of good. Or in, in a legal term, this is num rule number one, rule number two, rule number three. Those are laws. And they are more like a like an idea, like a, like a virtue, right? Virtue means that it's a model that you strive to work towards an ideal society, how does it form? And these are the components of a society that is kind and good. And people who walk this path of virtue and avoid path of vice and evil will reap the rewards. So all kinds of rewards, good relationships with your work, with your spouse, with your families. Those are because of your good karma, you reap what you sow. And all these are very um, practical and it's common for us to bring out real life example to complement these teachings. So number two, chap chapter number two is about uh, the good. And uh, chapter number three, as you can see, is the meat of the entire Taishan series. It has 86 <laughs> bad things that we have done, uh, that we might commit or transgressions that we might have done uh, that will minus our fortune, that will cause harm to our fortune or the fortune of our descendants or our uh, families. And this shows that how easy it is to turn, uh, how to say, to be complacent and, or 84, to be complacent and get, uh, you know, committing these um, crimes in a, in, a, in a karmic sense. All right. Some of them are illegal as well, but most of them is on a moral level, on the virtual level. And the section four is about the retributions of evil. Basically, is the, the, the consequences. You know, As you can see in the law, they will talk about what is wrong, offenses, and then what is the uh, sentences that can be passed on. Uh, and the last one tells us that it's not, a, it's a, it's not worth it at all. So the whole point of the book is telling you, you gain nothing. Even though you may gain, look like you take advantage of someone or, or something, uh, um, but you will, it will call up to you, your act will call up to you in the end. Uh, 
um, it's not a case of uh, uh, it ain't no crime if you're not getting caught. You will get caught because your mind is a recording machine. It's already recording everything you do. You can't deny your own deeds for yourself. It's, it's a Chinese term to say that the, uh, the net of justice will fall from the heaven. No one will, no one will uh, be escaped. No one can escape from it. So do, be right by yourself. Um, do right by yourself. Uh, and, and be right in your heart and then do right by others. And eventually your life will get better. But we will go in depth of that because these are very com condensed form and it's it, it sounds a bit like very 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 serious and there are many historical studies which I will not bring out right now because we want to get to the beat of it and then we get discussed right so sorry for the scrolling um, yes for us pure land I need to add on top of that is as a pure land practitioner or as a person who uh, wish to have you know a daily in our daily endeavors, we want to have a good life. We want to have a good, um, a good job, uh, good work, uh, improvements in our any aspect of our life. This is also helping us. All right. First, we start with pure land. To go to pure land, we need to have the um, the enough merits. That it's like a rocket going to the orbits. You need to have enough fuel, and this is one of the way to accumulate the fuel, not leaking the fuel. Um, because a lot of times we might think without standard, we might think, yeah, I think I'm good. You know, I'm a good person. Um, and it's good to, to affirm yourself, but you also need to have a standard as well to tell yourself, am I? Uh, let's have a look at this and compare against this one and say, okay, this is why a good person uh, will get the good reward because he acted like this. So this, the purpose of this session is to Make it clear, you know, this is not just a, a law to follow. It's not death, it's a life. Um, the purpose of this is just to tell us the cost of committing transgression is too high uh, for us to even contemplate, even though it gives you the short-term um, benefits uh, that we, we might enjoy now. But the long-term consequences is too much. And for on the contrary, being good may cost you a bit or a lot in the current situation maybe cost you uh, you know favors with your friends or favors with people who follow in the group think it means follow the follow the wave but if you stood by what is right eventually you get rewarded this life or next life but at the moment um, we are not jumping to the gun yet so let's begin with section one cause and effect um, and then after that, we can open for discussion. So chapter one begins with this term. I will start with Chinese and then I'll read the English. So the exalted one, Lao Tzu, states that fortune and misery do not happen uh, at, I mean, it, it looks like it happens at random. Directly translation, the fortune and misery looks like there is there is no like set path, like to get a definite answer. This is fortune. This is misery. Uh, it looks like it happens randomly. Maybe you are walking on the street, someone mark you, or maybe you um, or you sitting at home suddenly you got job offer something like that. Uh, fortunes and misery, they do not happen at random, but uh, in fact. They are not happening at random. Everything happens for a reason. Uh, they are caused by our own karmic actions. That means um, uh, these are accumulated karmas of our past in this life or past in, in many lives ago. Uh, the rewards for aversions, virtue and good deeds as well as consequences of evil deeds follow each like a shadow. So, Hof Woman is talking about, the first sentence is talking about the the concept. And then the second part is talking about the, the fact, uh, the mechanism, how it works. Uh, it follows exactly the dose of the karmic uh, consequences or karmic rewards is exactly what you did. Uh, you get exactly what you have. Um, and this one has perfectly matched with what Buddha's teaching is about. When he starts 
his teaching. He don't start it immediately. Yes, he did talk about the high level thing in Fa Hua Jing uh, in Huayan Jing in the Flower Adornment Sutra, but that was not to us. It was to the higher bodhisattvas. When he started teaching in our world, he begins with this. He begins about be you know filial to your parents as a lay person and as a monk. You have to follow the rules, the precepts, and then he did talk about karmas. So this this is why it's foundational. And in Liaof, in not Liaofan, yeah, in Liaofan, he mentioned also a lot about uh, uh, how how his mind help or cause his unbecoming, like uh, his his thoughts that affects his speech and action. But this one goes more into the spiritual side, and just because we have a tendency not to take this in seriously in the modern society doesn't mean it does not exist. Um, we treat these um, spiritual beings more more of a police enforcement officer rather than a, a divine that creates or destroys. So they have a law to follow. They have the regulation to follow. Um, they administer justice according to the crime. So punishment befits the crimes. Um, and in the second sentence, they immediately go into the mechanism of it. They continue with this. How do they administer exact as you have? First, depending on the severity of a person's individual offenses, the spirits of justice shorten his or her original lifespan in proportion to the level of weakness involved. Um, so it's, it's um, among all the punishments, even in our human society, the worst one is life sentence, short of a death penalty, obviously, is life sentence. And life sentence is basically saying that you, you use your time. Everyone has a certain amount of time, right? Our life is, give yourself 100 years old, okay? It's a time. And it's a ticking clock that keeps going down. Uh, they count against uh, you. So every day you pass is one step closer to that. It sounds very heavy, but it's a reality. And the worst punishment is to take away the time that you could have cultivated, could have spent with your loved ones or something, because you're offended. You, you, you commit offenses. Hence, we have this life imprisonment. So in this case, it's the same. They will cut short the time you have in this uh, society, uh, in this life. Um, by according to the level of punishment that you have. Sorry, is how joining? Having trouble joining us? Yeah, I got All it. Right, yeah. Cool, okay. So, um, just like in the human world, every every single level of um, our commit a crime or, or, or offenses or transgressions or the good deeds that we did will help us to increase or decrease our fortune. And among all the fortune, in this case, it's called fubao. That means the things that you enjoy. The, the most precious one is your time, which is your life. Your life is your time. So the time you have in this world. And, um, and then after that, you can talk about wealth, family, uh, you know, because without time, without lifespan, you can't do anything. Even though you have $1 million, but you don't have one day left. It's useless. So time is important, number one. And then you have the, I'm talking about the worldly matters first. The time, and then you have the wealth, and then you have the, the other, you know, the quality of life and all the enjoyments you have. So over here, they go straight to the point. Doesn't mean the, the rest were neglected. <clears throat> Furthermore, not the only offenders have their life shortened. Various punishments such as misery, poverty, ill repute, misfortune, etc., etc. Legal penalties. So this one in our current society, we can we can see how it reflects uh, us to us, especially in terms of COVID, in terms of um, a lot of you know, um, in terms of society issues, turbulence. So these are also a form. I'm talking about the big one, but for yourself individually, uh, if things going well one day for you, or there are days you feel like. 
why do I feel so unlucky? You know, everything I do does not go well. Uh, everything I try to achieve does not uh, miss the mark or something. Uh, this is also the time for us to uh, sit down and reflect. Well, maybe I should, you know, uh, continue to work hard and cultivating my virtue so that I can improve myself. There must be something uh, we can improve upon. We have done well, but we need to do better. Or if we done wrong, we need to make it right. Something like that. Even do you do good, but you still need to do better because only Buddha can say, I'm perfect. All of us, we, we can keep improving. That's the best part about us is um, we're not perfect, but we can improve. So that's the story of these uh, teachings. So all these miseries uh, has its reasons. And if we can take it with an open heart, with an open mind, it's not easy, but if we can uh, understand this law of karma, and even though we cannot see it, but we understand that there is this law in work, in action, and we are under the effect of this law because we haven't uh, escaped from the six realms. Uh, that means we still have committing our speech karma, thought karma, and action karma. There's only three karma. Uh, there, there are many karmas, but they're all committed by these three. Speech, sen yu yi, just the, the, the speech, the thought, the action. That's it. That's the source. And obviously this source, uh, we still committing it, good or bad. Uh, so we still under the law. We cannot escape from it until you have liberated. Even you liberated, you still have to follow the law if you want to appear here. So, okay, back to the point. Um, this also applies to the positive one. So this, this looks very negative because this is about prevention of a crime, like say preventing you from committing uh, karma. Some, some of them we might not be aware of because some of them is in the thoughts. So without dwelling too long, there are many enforcement officers and we call it demigods and spirits, such as half-spirit, gods of the north. So Taipei, San, Taipei, Dou Shen Jun, San Taipei, Dou Shen Jun. So those people, they, they have a different jurisdiction. All right? I'm just using the term that we, we used in the north, in the south area, something like that. And they will have a record. In Buddhist term, this is what we call alaya consciousness, which is, alaya, which is our, our brain has the ability to record everything whatever it happens. Whether we remember or not is one thing, but it will absorb every single thing uh, that we did, that we say, that we think. And it will store in the, in the storage. Even though you pass away, you move on to the next existence, it will still be there. So think of it that way, it makes more sense. And all these things is the projection of our alaya consciousness. In a sense, we are projection of each others. So I'm not going too much in there, sorry, but um, all phenomenon arises from the heart. All right, this is based on this foundation. So, if a person has committed a great evil, twelve years are shaved off his lifespan. While small offenses warrant a reduction of hundred days, there are over a hundred offenses, both severe and light, and those who wish to live a long life must know. So, right from the literal sense. Um, it's like life sentence, right? 12-year sentence, 15-year sentence. And then if you do small thing, you might be penalty $100, $200. Um, but if you think about time as, a, as an everyday person, uh, we have 24 hours. In this 24 hours, we have 12, 8 hours to 12 hours, right? To 10 hours spent on work. I think it might be more for Michael as a surgeon. More than 10 hours? Is it too much? I can uh, create an opening. From average eight hours work time or plus the lunch nine hours to the, the one like uh, Michael's working as overtime on 14 hours. Uh, we have already spent more than half of it, isn't it? Uh, of, our, of our everyday 24 hours uh, budget. Everyone has 24 hour budget. No matter how rich you are, how poor you are, how, you know, how sage you or how, like where you are. 24 hours is our allocated budget, life budget. And this life budget, we have um, half of it being used in our daily um, duties. And then another half, say, give it, um, you know, 10 hours, all right? 10 hours, we spend uh, eight hours to sleep. Uh, 24 minus 10, give it 14, eight hours. Uh, and then six hours left uh, 
for us, you know, to eat as well, right? To eat two hours, toilet, give it plus or minus three hours gone. So we have three hours left, three to four hours left um, for us to do the free activities. Well, uh, if you have family, it's different. Um, but, uh, but for us to allocate this precious three, four hours is very important in deciding where we are going in our future. Like how far are we going to go? It includes pure land, includes career, includes uh, other places, other uh, aspects of your life. But for us, we talk about pure land now. Yeah. So what I'm trying to say is taking 12 years off from your lifespan or reduction of 100 days is no small matter. It might seem like, you know, I'm young, you know, 20 years old each. And yeah, 100 days, you know, just half a year, we're fine. But um, just to bring this into perspective, that's the whole point I'm trying to say is we'll bring this to perspective is um, if we can avoid it and instead we used our time to actually uh, first hold ourselves accountable and then once we are getting a hang of it, we can benefit others through in your job as well. While you're doing the job, you can still do good uh, on top of your duties, you know, and also outside the job, you volunteer and stuff like that. So that's why there's merits about this flying around. It's just how we use it. So this is like, if it's talking about bad things, if you go again, if you go to the other direction, it's good thing. Okay. So think of it like that. It might seem very negative in the sense like, oh, everything is like very, very serious, but they're telling you so that you can go to the other direction. You don't have to go through this. So that's the compassionate uh, uh, intention of a of a of a exalted one of a Buddha. So once we understand this one, I'm not dwelling too long on this because these are straightforward. You do good, you get good. You do bad, you get bad. The the whole point of this book is um, not talking too much about the big understanding, big theories. Tell this one is actually very popular among the illiterates. Combine, combine with the literate literatis in ancient China, but it's also commonly dispensed among the illiterate. It serves as a citizen's education, uh, in a sense, uh, in a sense, uh, without having to go through too many uh, programs. It's very organic, weave with everyday people's life. So, in in some sense, Master Ching Kong mentioned in the old days, not too old, uh, fifty years, sixty years ago. In you know, in Malaysia, in Taiwan, in even in China, they they still have people who believe in the god of Cheng Huang, and this god of Cheng Huang is kind of like a district county, but respected one, and they were all like think about uh, uh in in the temple they were always drawn a lot of uh, karmic uh, graph. So if you do good, this kind of uh, picture will come out and say that this this is how. A good life looks like, and if this person being filial, this person being uh, uh, f- do his job, uh, do not bribe. Even there's a lot of officials back then, or this person do not take advantage of others as a merchant. So, you know, um, do not trying to uh, take advantage of people. Uh, earn what they supposed to earn, not too much. Something like that, or the consequences of doing bad things, uh, you know, sexual misconduct or uh, murder, stuff like that, etc., etc. They use drawings from this book to educate. Everyone went in there, like pray for their safety, safety of their family. They saw that immediately. They understand. Okay. So what I'm trying to say is, this one can be learned even from illiterates, people who does not know any single word, illiterate. But for the people who are literate, like all of us who have studied highly educated people, this is also used a lot as well, especially among the government officials. Every day they have a book in front of their office. And when they're free, they open up the book and check. Have I been too much? Has my behavior done too much uh, in, in transgression on these teachings, the, the spirit of the law? right? And, and, and in the letter of the law is um, this as you can see here, yeah, letter of the law. So, have I actually respect the elderly and care for the young in my line of work? Um, see, even as a as a bank, like we we have to think about um, the elderly, the vulnerable customers, and we have to think about how we 
service them and understand their perspective, empathies, like uh, what Michael just said, and how do we do it well to serve them. So this is also telling us uh, professionalism. We use a modern word professionalism, but we go beyond that. It's our, uh, it's it's who you are, your characters. And this one helps to build your characters by giving you a standard. Because nowadays, um, it's a world, it's a beautiful thing is we are open, we are more open, we are less, um, how to say, trap under the, under the, um, under the corn, under in the bubble. We are more open, we open up to more opinions and everyone's understanding. But at the same time, we lose, somehow we um, got too confused by the information that we lose our compass. And this is serving as a compass in the middle of this informational um, era where everything is, uh, any, any, any issues have thousands of opinions and thousands of kind of uh, uh, hundreds of um, perspectives. So how do, I, how do I extract the good out of it and leave out something that are useless? <clears throat> this is helping us. And here in section two, the virtuous individuals, <clears throat> first sentence, I'm just going to read the structure. Um, he walks the path of virtue and avoids the path of vice and evil. That's it. That's a that's a whole thing about. Okay, what it what what do you mean by being good? He walks the path of virtue and avoids the path of vice and evil. Yes, what does that mean, virtue? What does it mean, vice and evil? And then he goes further and says, he does not stray from what is proper and avoids committing offense in secret, thinking that no one will know. So immediately he jumps straight and says that what is the power of vice and evil um, is trying to do something thinking that no one will know. Um, so trying to, uh, how to say, self-restraint, lacking self-restraint, uh, allowing yourself to... Um, to, to be unleashed uh, in a way that it will harm others. And he amass merit and treats everything with gentleness and compassion. He is loyal to his countrymen, filial to his parents, and kind to his brothers and sisters. He cultivates himself and reforms others. He shows concern for the welfare of the lonely, widow, and orphan. So in Chinese, uh, so from the principle, the concept of, you know, do the right thing, walk the right path, to, you know, do not stray what is proper and avoiding commit offenses is secret. Um, these two, we can use a lot of examples uh, in real life to complement it. Um, but how? He has to go further in details. He amass merits and treats everything with gender and compassion. Person who have merits, who deserve merits, the attitude they have towards others is gentleness and compassion. And and just now I heard Michael's um, reflection on his line of work is because of the, is it please correct me? In the long hours of the work, everyone get tense up or. Let's end this in 10 times army tofu and uh, yeah. dedication of merits before we forget. <laughs> Sorry. Ami tofu. Ami tofu. Ami tofu. Ami tofu. Ami tofu. Ami tofu. Ah, me, to, fo. Ah, me, to, fo. Ah, me, to, fo. Ah, me, to, fo. So we'll have a special dedication and dedication of merits per the book. May the merits and virtues be accrued from today's Dharma sharing. Uh, be dedicated to Venerable Master Ching Kong and may his Dharma uh, body be staying with us longer so that we can receive more teachings. Uh, may the dedication of merits also be dedicated to all beings who suffered from pandemics, disasters, uh, man-made or natural. Um, and may all of us who cultivate in this path of enlightenment be uh, able to improve 
both materially, spiritually, uh, all aspect of our life, especially our confidence in the path of pure land, uh, confidence in our mental form, confidence in our ability to be better person uh, than we were. May the merits and virtues accrue from this work, adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teaching for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. <laughs>